Anthony Clarkson, and we're in my apartment slash studio. I'm working on pieces for a new show called The Withering coming up in February 2015 at Thanks Space Gallery. It's kind of based around the intertwining of nature and human existence, how we sometimes seem to deny it, but how much it's intertwined, but both feed off each other. And just trying to show that connection, how we you know, harm the earth, we're harming ourselves really. It's a little bit lighter in theme compared to my last show, Masking Our Descent, but it's still pretty dark overall. Every time I do a show for myself, I usually work around a different theme. I never know like where the themes are gonna go until usually I'm almost done with the show before. So basically when I was about two weeks from finishing the last show, I had the idea for this show. And it seems to always go like that. It's I'm like getting worn out on one idea, I get completely inspired for like a whole new theme. So yeah, it's, it's sometimes I think, oh, where am I gonna go from here or whatever, but then when it hits, it hits fast and you just know exactly where you're gonna go. Number one thing is music. That's one of those things where I can hear a song and instantly start seeing colors and as the song goes on I start seeing imagery and a lot of times by the end of a song I'll completely have an idea for a piece when I had nothing at the beginning of it. That's my number one influence is definitely music. I listen to all kinds of stuff but mainly I listen to a lot of dark European uh, music, avant-garde, kind of gothy rock. Some of the bands that I just absolutely love are Anathema, Catatonia, Paradise Lost, Opeth, stuff like that. I find it very moody music, uh, kind of dark but also heavy. Like, I don't know, it's just the kind of thing that's always like, totally captured my imagination. Other than that, I really like movies and literature, really inspiring. You know, a lot of themes dealt with in movies I get inspired by and instantly want to do my take on those ideas. My family was definitely supportive. Uh, growing up in Kansas, you know, there's not a lot of kids who are into the kind of stuff I'm into. You know, everyone's into like football and country music and all that. So I was definitely the weird kid. But uh, my family always was extremely supportive. And I think there's always been a bit of a creative streak in my family. Uh, my dad always loved working in, uh, with wood in his shop, building things. My mom sewed a lot. So I was always kind of into like being around people like doing things like that. Uh, they definitely didn't understand, I guess, what I was into, darker imagery and stuff like that, heavy metal and all that. But uh, they were always extremely supportive because it was the one thing I was just so passionate about. It's the one thing that it's like, made me want to get up every morning. So uh, 
they definitely, definitely supported it. I was definitely inspired by, when I saw H.R. Giger's work, I was blown away. And that was like, as a kid, I was just like, man, you can do stuff that dark as a career. Then like the surrealism of Salvador Dali and stuff like that, that was always really influential when I was young. Then as I got older, I, I thought I was gonna have a career in comic books. So I got huge into like the comic book artists, you know, the, the whole like, early 90s movement when Image Comics was made, Todd McFarlane, uh, Jim Lee, all that. That was huge. I mean, I just, I loved those guys. So I basically worshiped them all through like middle school and high school. Then once I got to college, I realized I didn't really want to be in that industry. <laughs> all the things you have to go through to make it to where you get to where you do what you want to do. So, I was so into heavy metal by then, I was blown away by like cover art by, you know, Derek Riggs who did all the, almost all the Iron Maiden covers, Ed Repka who's doing the Megadeth covers, that stuff was amazing to me. So that's when I started falling into saying, well, if I'm not going to be a comic book artist, I want a little more freedom, maybe I can do album covers for bands. And I was fortunate enough to fall into that after college and I worked as head graphic designer for Century Media Records and Nuclear Blast Records for 12 and a half years. I did all the ads in magazines, posters. For a while I was the only graphic artist they had. By the end there I hired two assistants because the workload expanded so much. There's just been a lot of bands, a lot of bands that I've done work on. It's like I'm, I'm inspired by a span of different styles and different artists in different fields, but it's all just really cool stuff to me. I just love art. I was out in LA, you know, I'd been doing album covers for, I don't know, it was maybe three years or so. And a good friend of mine who also worked at the label, Andrew Hosner, who eventually opened Think Space, but hadn't yet. We were hanging out one night and he invited me out to a gallery showing. And I haven't been to gallery showings since college in Denver. And, you know, it was one of those things, I had that perception is like, uh, it's such a snobby field and I didn't really know how deep the lowbrow scene went then as they call now or the new contemporary scene but uh, he took me to a Sam Flora show and it was the night before the opening so we had the gallery to ourselves him and his wife were out talking to the owners so I got to wander around this Sam Flora show basically by myself in it just wandering around, I was in complete awe. I was like, you can do this? You can do this as a job? Mind blowing to me. And I decided right then and there, this is what I want to do with my life. It was one of those things where it's like, literally the next day, I just went home and I was like, okay, I'm gonna figure this out. But really soon afterwards, I remember Andrew for a long time kept talking about like, I'm gonna open a gallery, I'm gonna open a gallery. It's like, oh, that'd be cool. I had, I had no expectations of being shown or anything in his gallery, but because he knew me as the graphic artist at the label we both worked at, he was like, man, I need a postcard made for a show opening night, and I really don't have money to pour into like paying someone. He goes, would you be interested in just trying to paint something, put it in the show, and Hopefully it sells and you know it could be exposure for you and get you out there and maybe get a career started. So I did two small pieces 
and at the very first Think Space show, they both sold in the first 30 minutes. Instantly then, I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> that, that was mind blowing to me. So then, basically, in all the group shows, because early on when they were kind of building up artists and things, they did a lot of group shows, basically started putting a piece in almost every month, and they just sold regularly. And it just from there, kept going. And I've never looked back. Most of my work gets shown through Think Space. They're the main gallery, but I've shown through several others. Cave here in LA, and I've done a few group shows and stuff overseas. And basically, Think Space keeps me busy enough, you know, between group shows and mini solo shows and things. I have a big enough workload that I don't really have to look for other places, but you know, there's other galleries I definitely want to show at. painting primarily everything in acrylic. Before that, because I was so into comics, it was a lot of pen and ink work. I always wanted to ink my own pencil work, so I did that a lot, a lot of pen and ink, which I still enjoy, still really enjoy that. I like working in charcoals from time to time, but right now it's, it's pretty much primarily all acrylic. But I think this show, The Withering, in February is going to be probably my last major group of acrylic work. I'm really wanting to move on to uh, oils after this. I've always wanted to do that. I just think there's certain richness, lighting effects, things you can get that you just can't with acrylic. So, you know, it's one of those times it's like I, I keep wanting to progress in like how far I can take this. You know, I don't want to get just like stuck in one style, one look. I just want to keep progressing and try to make everything richer and fuller. So, definitely oils after this, I think, which there'll be a learning curve. I haven't used oils since high school, and I didn't even take them seriously then. It was just one of those classes where, you know, you do two weeks or a week or whatever, a week of charcoal, a week of acrylic, a week of oils, and so I, at that time, since I thought I was gonna be a comic book artist, I was just like, screw this. And I did two really quick pieces in oil, painted like a tree frog and a unicorn fetus. <laughs> I just did them really fast. But I still look back and think that the collars I got on them, I'm like, man, that was really good. I really think I'm gonna enjoy oils. So I'm looking forward to getting back and experimenting with those. I learned about Treckle just through other artists starting to talk about him. Greg Simpkins and stuff, and I saw that he was doing his own line of paints and things, and it got me really intrigued. I was like, huh, it's curious. Their paints have a certain flow that I really like about them, so. And that's the other thing, is when I get oils, I'm really curious to try out their oils. I really like it, it's really good stuff. They really are versatile enough to get everything you want to achieve done, done. say the main thing is do exactly what you want because you gotta like you gotta feel it for yourself first for other people to feel it and I think if you're out there trying to you know chase a certain scene or a certain acceptance of a certain thing that may not be 100% natural for you then you're always gonna kind of be chasing that you're always gonna be looking for a certain satisfaction for yourself first off but it just won't ring as true to people, you know? People can sense when it's like what you really are about and what you're really into as opposed to, you know, trying to fit in somewhere. So I think the number one thing is you just gotta be yourself, do your thing, it's art, you know? There's a fan base for every style and it might not be the biggest fan base, but 
you know, the thing is it'll be honest, it'll be real, and the people who are into it are gonna really like it because it's honest, they can feel it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I feel like a goon. So I'm just no like. Way, man, I'm totally mad. You're not, uh, you're not coming across as being nervous or anything. So. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All right.